Hey all, it's Coach, back with SHTF Fitness. Today, I wanted to talk about something that I see a lot of the prepper community talk about as far as exercise, and that's rucking. Now, rucking is great exercise in and of itself, so don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with rucking, it is great exercise. But is it enough to make you a well-rounded, physically capable person? No. Well, why is that? Well, human movement is based on six different patterns, okay? And you need to be strength training in all of those patterns in order to be well-rounded, effective, and therefore greatly limit your risk of injury. And rucking is only one of those patterns. So the other ones are pushing, can you, can you push things? Anytime you're pushing something away from your body or your body away from something, AKA the push-up, that's a push pattern. Is that incorporated in the rucking? No. Second is a pull pattern. That's anytime you are bringing something to your center of mass or vice versa. So, almost tripped and died there. So, can you get up on something, hang, can you pull yourself up? Can you even hang from it for any amount of time? These are both very important things. Are you gonna be able to scale up the side of a building if you're running from something or someone? Do you have that capability? Rocking doesn't cover that, right? Third pattern, it's a squat. The squat's the most important movement pattern. It's simply the ability to drop into a good squat. As people age, their squat usually deteriorates and therefore their health deteriorates. You get lower back pain and dysfunction, hip pain and dysfunction, myriad of things. I'm sure you've seen enough old people that have to fall into a seat and need help to get up out of the seat or have to push themselves out of the seat. Does rocking help with that? Well, no, because you're always standing, right? It might be a motion. So if you're gonna be even a tactical cool guy, right? I got my foot carrier and my guns and was tactical. Well, you might have to drop into a half kneeling position and do your thing. You might have to squat really quickly. You might have to drop really quickly to evade something. A lot of that is covered in a functional and good squat. A fourth movement pattern is the hip hinge. Can you move through your hips? well and appropriately. Can you do that and not feel it light up your lower back? But instead, get a nice stretch out of your hamstrings and your glutes. Most people, most sedentary people, do not move well through the hips. That's why lower back pain is so common and prevalent. A lot of people in the preparedness space, a lot of people that probably go rough daily, have hip problems. You're loading the hip. Okay, actually, it's on top of you. It's taking a beating as you're running and walking. Your hips are gonna pay for that, okay? You can easily get an overuse injury. So we need to learn a proper hip hinge. How does that help you practically? Well, picking things up. Can you pick up a heavy object and not blow your back apart? Can we move through the hips, load them, because your hips can handle more load than anything else in the body, can you load them properly? The fifth movement is essentially the core. When you think about the core, I want you to think about this entire structure. It's not just the six pack abs, right? This is not your core. From the top of your head to your pelvis and all the way around, that's your core, okay? Are we incorporating exercises that work that core. Now, rucking does help with that. As long as you have good, reasonably good posture, and you're staying upright, you're gonna learn how to brace through here, it is going to help. But it's not the only one. There's a myriad of ways. The simplest being the humble plank. Can you maintain the nice plank with good alignment for two minutes? If not, your core could use some work, okay? 
and going out and rucking for an extended period of time, you're probably just going to light up your lower back or get hip pain. Okay? Sixth movement is the carry. Rucking is the carry. Carry is rucking. Okay? What is a carry? The, ba the most basic version is a farmer walk. You may have seen people do this in CrossFit. That's probably where it's the most prevalent. But it's simply picking up something heavy and walking with it, right? So it's very similar to rucking. It's a good way to build the grip strength. It's a good way to load the system actually. And it works the entire body. Um, one of the great bonuses of it, opposed to rucking, is it's gonna work your grip strength in your forearms, okay? So a really easy example is a farmer walk. You just pick up some heavy objects, you stay tall, and you walk around with it, right? And if you're super duper prepper, homesteader type, you know, you might give this on a daily basis to, you know, feeding uh, creatures and doing things of that nature, moving things around your property. But it's amazing exercise. So, I'm not trying to demonize anybody. I'm not trying to demonize rucking, but just to try to uh, get across the understanding that that is not the end all be all. You're only training one functional pattern. And the risk of that is that if you are suddenly thrust into another pattern, if you suddenly need another pattern, if you're fighting the Russians or you know whatever stupid thing, well, if you're not already trained and strong in that pattern, that's when injury happens. So if you really want to be prepared physically, you need to incorporate all the movement patterns. If you have any questions or comments, comment below, I'll get back to you, or visit the website shtf.fitness. We'd be happy to help you out. We have several programs to offer and to choose from, and we'd be more than happy to help you on your road to success and preparedness. God bless you. Thank you so much.